Greetings, I am Tom Earl. On this week's episode, I interview the creators of Agent of Change. About a secret agent who's fighting crimes in the food industry. And he happens to be transgender. Check it out. Greetings, everyone. I am Tom Earl. Welcome to the celebration. As you know, this is my year of courage. I know you could be anywhere, so the fact that you are here sharing your greatest gift, your time and attention, means the absolute world to us. When I say us, it's not just the royal us. I actually, if you're listening and can't see right now, have two brilliant, creative, amazing guests that I am so thrilled to interview. Barely sleep last night. It's gonna be awesome. They go by the names of, to my right, Mickey Delmonico, to Mickey's right, to my double right, Sean Desani. How y'all doing today? What's up, Tom? Good. <laughs> good. That Shoot. was fun, double right. Double right, double We're right. off to a good start. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't y'all each give us, you know, the elevator pitch of who you are or, you know, that you're hanging around at a party and like... Oh, what, what, was, what are you about? You know, whatever, wherever you like. Oh, dance. I hate those parties. Yeah, I hate those parties <laughs> too. <laughs> I usually I just, I'm like, parties. I'll see you later. Okay, okay, I'll see you okay later. let's scratch no, no, that. But, but I understand. Tell us the bio that you yeah. always wanted to share. That's a lot of pressure too. <laughs> um, well, okay, how about this? Um, Mickey's the writer in this, and he's the wordsmith. But oh, I'll we're just, introducing just, uh, each other? <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, yeah let's yeah, try okay. that. Okay, okay, go for it, go for it. <laughs> All right, Mickey's a writer and a filmmaker from, originally from New York. Hey. Right. Went to Columbia for school. Whoa. And uh, I, I heard on the way, which he's told me a number of times, but I think I always forget the name of his undergrad is Bucknell mm. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And uh, and we met, we met 2014, mm. okay. I feel. Right? Yeah. We met in 2014. We lived on the same side of Los Angeles, which is a big deal because I feel mm. like... It's hard to be friends with someone when they live on the other side yeah. of Los Angeles. So Unless they're he, central. Yeah. <laughs> like you are. He, he, he is on the bus line. Yeah. Well, that's, why I know. That's, why, that's why he was like, yeah. I'm going to be friends with this guy. I'll be friends with this guy. Yeah, there we go. it works. <laughs> so, um, so, yes, and he, he is an award-winning filmmaker. Mm. Uh, his film, Alto, is out. It's His feature film, Alto, is about it's a lesbian mob movie mm. and uh, and it's a comedy mm. and it's out for on digital distribution right now Amazon iTunes yep. Voodoo Roku watch all, it if you all, have all, the prime, all the different all the different boom yeah yeah, yeah. I dig I right. dig yep. yep okay before we jump was anything missed that you want to add oh he's Italian oh Italian hey, hey, hey. hey Delmonico <laughs> Del <Monica. laughs> my nice Irish name <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Um, Anything you want to add to that before you introduce Sean? No, that was actually really good. Oh, hey, high five with yeah, I like it. it. Show him. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Don't leave me hanging. Oh, sorry. Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Um, Sean Desani, um, he told you when we met, he was born in North Carolina, mm. which I, you know, mm -hmm. I like North Carolina. Mm. Mm -hmm. Durham, is that right? Uh, Fayetteville. 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 Okay. okay. Wow. Yep. So I got the right general area. Yeah. Um, and we met and we hit it off. Yeah. Um, an odd thing that happens to us though, yeah. uh, this isn't really part of the introduction, but oh. an odd thing that happens to us is that people think that we're twins. Yeah. <laughs> really? It's very yeah. strange. <laughs> people are brothers, twins, like yeah. people twins. They, That's they awesome. They do that to us all the time, <laughs> wherever we are. Yeah. It's just a, we, I think at this point we just go with it. Yeah, we, just, uh, we okay. totally roll with it. Who was it. born we, first? He yeah. Oh, uh, I definitely, unfortunately, I really was. Yeah, this is my baby brother. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. the older, wiser one. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> 60 seconds? <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's but um, I, I would like to finish introducing you because he's. Yeah. this is an amazing mm -hmm. actor. Oh. Um, I've seen him. I've seen your acting grow in, since I've known you. Um, and he, he has inspired me to create mm. this character with him, um, for Agent of Change. And I just, uh, I really respect your creative, um, sensibilities and the way that, uh, we've found a way to work together. Mm. Yeah. So, thank yeah. you. Thanks yeah. so much, man. Mm. That's, that was great. Yeah. This was nice. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. I'm going to have people, we're going to have people like, phone in and introduce I people know, all the time. This is yeah. great. 
I feel all warm and fuzzy. Yes. Yeah, like, thank you. Yeah. So you mentioned already Agents of Change. So that's that's the project that y'all are working on mm-hmm. and are doing crowdfunding for. Is it in, on Indiegogo? Actually, it's on Seed and Spark. Seed and Spark. Okay. And um, and it's interesting because we yeah we did we literally just launched this crowdfunding mm-hmm. campaign uh, three okay. days ago. Mm-hmm. And um, and we're doing pretty good so far, you know, but it does, you know, things go in waves. Yeah. Uh, it's a 30 day campaign. We were looking at what platform made the most sense for this particular show and for us. And um, we're looking at Seed and Spark because one of the things that I think was really attractive for us was you have to, you don't necessarily have to hit 100% of your goal, mm-hmm. but you do have to hit 80% of your goal mm-hmm. to be able to keep the funds. And that holds us to a level of accountability mm. um, and also at that point you uh, they they unlock certain perks mm. s- filmmaker perks they're exclusively a filmmaker platform um, so say for example we hit our goal uh, they will have deals with camera rental companies that they'll help uh, leverage for us so they can save us costs during the production um, and things like that so we were just like they're very filmmaker friendly so we wanted to use Seed and Spark as our platform of choice mm. Yeah, and not just because Seed has something to do with our project. What does that to do with? Give us the intro. What's it about? Yeah. yeah so um, we're uh, Guy Longoni, his character, hey. um, because he is Italian after all. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wrote the character. So he's like he's got to be an Italian. Guy. And these days, uh, I guess ethnically ambiguous is the, is the thing. So we're like, all right, let's just go with it. We well, are twins. That's, That's right. It. That's so it. he's Italian. You are too. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> Or I'm Indian. You know, or you're there Indian. it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but he's investigating crimes. He's part of an agricultural crimes unit. Mm. And he's investigating crimes in the uh, farming mm. community and mm. beyond. Mm. So, yes. Crimes like the farmer killed another farmer? <laughs> that would be that. Good. <laughs> maybe season two. Okay, season maybe two. Maybe season two. You heard it I, first. You know, maybe. <laughs> You know, nothing it's like just a straight homicide. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like run Needle over by a tractor, or, or you know, yeah, yeah. There's no stealing tractor wheels. Oh, yeah. Although that does happen, but yeah. So uh, what kind of crimes are we talking about yeah. here? Uh, so okay, so season one. You want to know the plot for season one? If you can tell us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially like the synopsis of season yeah. one, we we're looking at. Well, the overall show is about like. Um, yeah, this character who's fighting crimes in the food industry and in agricultural crimes. Uh, and um, season one, we were looking at seeds. Mm. It's the start of everything is seeds, right? Mm. So we were like, well, we are, we're filmmakers. So it's not like we knew tons about this stuff or even necessarily know tons about this stuff um, even now. But we were like, let's learn about it because it's interesting to us. So um, there's this place called the Global Seed Vault, mm. which is a place in Norway. It's buried into the mountain in Norway. So is this true or a part of the story? This part is true. This is what kind of influenced the okay. story. Yeah, it's so actually we were, off the coast. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so we were thinking like, okay, so this global seed vault actually houses all of the different seed varieties mm-hmm. around the world in case there's like mass destruction, you know, mm-hmm. whoever survives will be able to replant the crops mm-hmm. using these seeds. And we were like, okay, this is really interesting. Like we didn't know anything about mm-hmm. this. And, um, and we thought, well, what if there was a particular seed in there that got stolen. Mm. Why would it be stolen and who would steal it? Like what would make it so valuable that someone would want to steal it and have like full control and ownership over that seed? So that kind of launched us into this whole idea of let's write these episodes out and let's explore and understand like seeds and food from like this holistic perspective. Like who's Mm. controlling our food Mm. and who's making and manufacturing our food. So that's where we launched into season one of Agent of Change. And because it's us, it's a comedy. (laughs) <laughs> it's a comedy <laughs> what Agent of Change almost sounds like it has like a activism or social justice connotation but so far it sounds like it's a hilarious James Bondy thing am I misinterpreting the title no you're not actually okay. I mean there is that element and as Sean said we're trying to learn and we're also trying to educate so mm. as, as the knowledge comes into us we want to share it and we want to get people interested and engaged in a fun way um, but these are real issues, you know, our food mm. source is, is crucial. We don't, mm. we don't live without it. So, mm. um, we're trying to help spread the word. Mm. Yeah. Well, you brought up the James Bond, uh, aspect and you, you probably your audience wouldn't have known that, but you've seen the little clip. Mm. Right? Um, I spoiled so, it. 
No, no, but, no, no, but it's okay because I think what, when we were kind of thinking about this idea, like this whole thing came up because we were talking about uh, James Bond mm-hmm. and we were talking about um, how kind of cool and iconic this archetype was. And really from our perspective, so um, we, we're both trans guys. Mm-hmm. And from our perspective, we were like, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a trans James Bond type mm-hmm. of character? And that's kind of where this entire thing started because, first of all, there's not a whole lot of trans male representation in the media. Mm. Um, There never has been, uh, visibly. Mm -hmm. But even today, there are some characters that you'll see on shows, and it's great. It's great to see. We're like, let's let's do something Mm. where we can take this type of archetype that's relatable, you know, through, I don't know, the first James Bond films were, what, from the 60s or so? Mm. I think so. Do you remember something, yeah. something like that? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we were like, well, this... And there have been so many films, right? We were like, let's reimagine this character. We actually watched some of the Bond films and we were like, yeah, there were some aspects that I think we really were drawn to from his masculinity and some parts that we really wanted to kind of reimagine and take a different... have a completely different perspective on. Mm. Um, and we think, you know, we thought we were like, well, and we can do that. We can do that today. So... Anything you want to add? Yeah. No, just that, you know, when we when you see when you have a story and it's not out there, you need to create it. Mm-hmm. I think neither one of us are complainers. We're more like we want to see something, so we're going to try and do it. Mm. Reminds me of uh, MK Asante Jr. He says if you make an observation, you have an obligation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what is the okay. observation that y'all made that you felt like I have an obligation to tell the story? What mm-hmm. would you say is that? I think you already started touching upon it. Maybe for you, in your words, what for you? Um, I think specifically the opportunity to address uh, issues of masculinity coming from a perspective that is is not t- is atypical mm. um, in the world and offers a different uh, perspective. So, and what's that different perspective? Um, being trans, having lived um, some of my life in a being socialized female Mm -hmm. um, impacted me greatly Mm -hmm. and um, I can share the lessons that I learned from from that time and share it with with other men and try and alter the conversation a little bit Mm -hmm. it seems to be an important one that we're all trying to really have a need for having Mm -hmm. right especially with me too times up which really just bring you the surface systemic problems that have always been there. That's right. Did did that fuel the sense of urgency for either of you at all? I, I don't know. I don't know that it fueled the sense of urgency. I th- felt like it's been there. Mm-hmm. The urgency's been there. Um, for me personally, yeah, I think um, post transition and even yeah, I was just looking for this. Um, really trying to figure out this new body and navigating this world in this new body and like mm-hmm. the expectations that I felt were on me um, as someone who's now read cis male mm-hmm. and um, conversations maybe other men might have with me mm-hmm. thinking I'm just like them mm-hmm. and kind of trying to figure out well this person just said something completely problematic I don't know how to handle it mm-hmm. and perhaps if they had read me as female they wouldn't have said something like that in the first place mm-hmm. so there was a lot of trying to figure out, like, what do I do in this situation? What do I say? And so I would go back and just kind of write about it because I, w- I would think to my, you know, to myself. I always say I would think to myself as if I would think to someone else, but it's just a habit of saying that. I would think to myself. Uh, <laughs> I would think, like, you know, if this is going to happen again, mm-hmm. and the only way to kind of understand how you're going to respond next time is to actually journal about it, mm. take some time, write about it, and kind of dissect it a little bit. And that was, bef- you know, I still do that mm. sometimes, but I think it really helped, like, meeting Mickey and kind of being able to talk about these things and, and share these things and kind of learn from each other. Well, how do you handle when somebody says something like this? So when you talk about urgency, like, for me, like, it's felt like it's been there because mm. I've needed it. I've needed to know how to handle certain situations or how to talk about certain things, so... Mm. Could you share any of the insights that you were saying you learned from Mickey some ways to handle it or ways to address when things like that happen? Do you, do you mind sharing, Mickey, any of the um, insights I, you shared? Well, one I'm thinking of is just um, 
I have a uh, my voice and people for your radio guests may I, I get misgendered mm -hmm. because I have a higher voice and I remember talking to you about that and saying you know I don't know what to say to people when mm -hmm. they misgender me on the phone I'm so tired of correcting mm -hmm. them and even after I correct them having them continue to call me mm -hmm. ma'am or you know uh, continue to misgender me and I remember I, I'll let you tell it because you know, <laughs> the way that he handled it um, yeah and this is, was something I had yeah. to write about because yeah. you know it, it, it would feel very uncomfortable for me too mm -hmm. if someone would say uh, refer to me as ma'am mm -hmm. and um, and so what I started doing was I would say to them you know, I know my voice is beautiful, but it's actually sir. Mm. And then they would start laughing, <laughs> and I would start laughing, and then we would just carry on. And mm. usually it was someone on uh, customer service. Yeah, <laughs> like we would just yeah. carry on. Like, All right, let's fix that uh, phone bill. Now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, but you know, it's hard to. I mean, it's easy to get upset when we feel like we're not being seen or not. You know, but. You know, and we would, yeah, you're right. right. So we would talk about this all the time, and it, it was really helpful to have somebody to be able right. to talk to right. when this would happen. Yeah. yeah. Would you say that became the foundation for this relationship you now have as creators in crime? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. I was like, what's yeah, the creators of change? Creators yeah, of change? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't commit any crimes. But I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. Creators of rhyme? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That's all you would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why he doesn't have to say our names again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, our basis for a friendship, he works out all the time. And I was like, he's ripped. And every time I see him, I'm like, man, I got to call Mickey, man. He's, like, he's got his like shirt on right now. It's like, there's nothing but nice. muscle down in there. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out the body double thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I told him, when we have like a silhouette shot of my character doing pull-ups, we're going to switch me out uh, with you. And it's like, it's all going to be you over there. But in a very obvious way. Nice, yeah, nice. You know, completely. Yeah. <laughs> At first I was going to be like, you know, Mitt, the trainer from Rocky, but, you know, <laughs> I'm really not that good on camera. Yeah. He found out. <laughs> uh, he's better than it's he okay. is. <laughs> but, yeah. but where did the, the seed, was it planted that y'all were like, the seed. there you go, See? there you go. You got <laughs> it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> then you're like, let's do something together. Tell mm -hmm. me where... Were you Ooh. at a bar? Were you in a car? Were you on a no. plane, a train, <laughs> on the back of a shark? Like, where were y'all? Yeah. Where you're like, scooter. <laughs> let's work together. And then right away, did you know what it was going to be? Which came first? Like, tell me a little, take us yeah. there. So we were, it was Outfest, and we were... Um, oh, we which is a queer film festival. Right, yeah. right. You were friends already? Yeah. We knew each other. Yeah, okay. we, we drove okay. over together. Okay. Um, and so we had been talking, mm -hmm. um, and then we met up with a few other guys um, who were also trans, and the three of, us, the, the three of them and us started communicating about, like, James Bond, mm -hmm. you know, like, this is interesting, archetypes, male archetypes, what are they? And we went to whatever the event was, and then when we were driving home, I think you and I just started talking about, like, well, we could do this. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. this is actually a really interesting idea, mm -hmm. and why not? Mm -hmm. And so then we started watching some James Bond films together, talking it through, talking through the ideas, and... Um, I think it went from there. Mm. Yeah, it went from there. And then we had to figure out, well, what is he, what kind of crime is he solving? Right. And we sat with that for a little while. I think Mickey had read an article about uh, seeds and seed patenting. The, the global and, seed vault. The global it was, seed it was about the global seed vault, mm. yeah. And I was like, this needs a villain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but this needs a villain. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. And the pieces just started to connect and the dots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I started, I did start to think about seed in a thematic way mm -hmm. you know just in terms of as you were saying the uh sean the basis of everything you know mm -hmm. is, starts from seed um including sperm and including mm -hmm. you know that they refer you know it just it all worked for me thematically mm -hmm. and it started to come together and i thought well we are examining issues of masculinity so this is this is appropriate mm. where for folks who are already like yes yeah. Where is the website that people can donate to? Sure. Uh, so that is agentofchangeshow.com. Okay. 
and um, right now it's it links straight to our seed and spark page so um, so our crowdfunding page where folks can go over and they can contribute to the campaign if they like the idea they can watch the pitch video mm. of who we are who our team is that's trying to create the show and what the show is all about and um, and they can follow along as well so if you could this is actually interesting too because it, it helps to have followers mm -hmm. on the platform because um, I think our first perk that Seed and Spark unlocks for us or one of our perks is if we hit a milestone of getting 250 followers yeah. mm, on right. the platform then we get a whole other set of perks that gets unlocked at 500 followers so this is important because you know some people may not be able to contribute financially which is understandable right but like just even hitting that follow button is huge for us it mm. does a lot to um, help us get that much closer to our goal mm. agents of change show dot com yeah actually it's agent yeah, agent there's no s folks yeah, <laughs> remove that s <laughs> and it's it. just one sean is the agent he what's is the, the lady agent. or something what's the character's name guy long longoni guy longoni <laughs> is the okay here's the thing we know i know and so do the people listening that the celebration listeners are the coolest audience in the entire World. Heck yeah. That's right. they know yeah. That. We know yeah. that. Here's the thing. If you are listening to this, I want you to pause it. Screenshot. If you're on your listening to the podcast, screenshot this. If you're on the phone, you're on your computer, screenshot this. Okay? Step two. You're going to head over to agent, no S, of change show dot com. Okay? And if you follow them right now, if you, if you push pause, screenshot this. Follow them. And email me that or post it online and tag me. I'm going to give you a 30-minute coaching session absolutely for free. Okay? It's so $150 value. If you donate in this moment, I'll give you an hour and a half long one. That's almost a $400 value. You have to do it right now because we want them to be like, we, these, these people donate even before they finish the show. So screenshot the page. Head over there. Donate now. Email it to me. Post online. Tag it to me. Even if you just follow... I'm going to give it to you. So just follow them. It costs you nothing. It costs you nothing. Share that love. But if you do donate, send it to me. And then since you screenshot it in this exact moment, boom. Does that sound good to y'all? That's amazing. Thank you so much. Hey! Yeah. I wish we were alive. So we yeah. could be like, Thank you. oh, oh, <laughs> but you know, I just did it. Yeah. You know? We'll have to do yeah. another time. Y'all do a phone <laughs> Yeah. I want to be one of the hosts. Oh, yes, we talked about doing it. We were, doing it. Just, talking we had, we were it. just talking about it. Facebook we were, live style. Yeah, yeah. It completely. We we're talking yeah. about awesome. it. All right, you're in. You're That's in. it. That's awesome. We know who to call. No, yeah. this is, we are literally we're three days into the campaign. Mm. And we were yeah. talking about earlier today. We we're like, okay, what are we going to do to like keep it going, keep the momentum going? Mm. So a couple of things. One, definitely we're talking about doing the telethon. Another thing that we want to just keep this fun, you know, sometimes yeah. like asking for support around things can be really hard, yeah. you know, and, and people who are being asked might get fatigued and the people who are asking get fatigued. So we're like, let's keep it fun for all of us. Right. Because I think, you know, every time we've talked to folks just about the idea of the show, it's no doubt that we feel we are getting a lot of support and a lot of like a lot of love, love. A lot of love. Yeah. you know folks like really find it like an interesting idea and topic and whatnot so we want to go all the way we want to make mm -hmm. it right um but we're like every day through our crowdfunding campaign that we hit a goal i'm supposed to do a fun challenge <laughs> now mickey is supposed to do a fun challenge too we're trying to get mickey to start doing these <laughs> yeah. but like so far like okay so for example day one we hit our goal of getting at least 10 percent funded and now I made this challenge up all by myself. <laughs> and it so shows. So this is how no. like bad this is. This is why we need other people to challenge. Because the challenge was I had to do one pull-up on the pull-up bar. Uh. And by chance, we had a friend visiting with her infant son. And I made him do the pull-up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you get when I have to make up my own challenge. Oh, yeah. my so goodness. So we need like, folks. The people who can make up the challenges are folks who contribute to the campaign. Yeah. Are allowed to say, okay. This is I, I contributed. Now I'm challenging you to do to do this. Yeah. And every day we hit a goal, we're supposed to do that. So we have one on the table right now, actually. What yes. is it? Yes. Once we hit ten thousand okay. dollars with our crowdfunding campaign, okay. Um, I'm supposed to dance like an elephant and sing my favorite love song. Hey! Yeah. And we are so close. I think you're at like ninety three hundred, ninety four hundred, ninety three fifty, ninety three fifty one right now. Let's have the celebration community 
be the one that brings in <laughs> the elephant. <laughs> Bring the elephant yes. in the room. <laughs> Let the elephant in the room. I like that. I like that. Let's make this personal. What does this mean to you? Being able to put this type of content out, tell this story, share it with the world. What does that mean for y'all as writer, yeah. as an actor, as somebody who relates to the character? Because you both secret agents. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm secretly a secret agent. <laughs> I like to think your audience. We've got a lot of secret yeah, agents. Yeah. Like a lot of secret agents doing some sort of yeah. cool work that we can't talk about. Uh, <laughs> what does it What does it mean for y'all? Though, in all seriousness. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, it just means the opportunity to um, be in my skin and feel comfortable mm-hmm. and be able to share that and be able to bring people into um, into the world, bring mm-hmm. people in instead of um, feeling as if people are out there mm. you know I want to be able to share um, with other people and hear what what their challenges are and bring that into the work we do mm. share with that. others yeah it's great um, uh, yeah I think in the last so I have a background in film production mm-hmm. and then got into acting about three years ago four years ago um, and you know, there you've probably seen like these stereotypical scenes or these scenes in different shows and movies where it's like actors go on auditions, you know, you know, all the time. You kind of feel like you're just a number, right? Getting mm-hmm. cycled through. And it's like, I, I really loved this process. And, and, um, and, and there is this like constant going on auditions and not getting the role and not getting the part that can play on somebody's psychology mm-hmm. and their sense of self. And it's important to have strong community through that process and, and supporters, and I've been really blessed to have that. But I think the one thing is true is that the role that you really want to do, especially when you're a person of color and a trans person of color, like someone's not going to write that for you. Mm-hmm. Like you have to create that for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I just got really lucky in meeting Mickey, and who's mm-hmm. already a phenomenal writer and great person to collaborate with. And it was, we were like, this is something that just we want to do. Mm. because the things that we want to do is no one's gonna do that I think you talk about this quite a bit right like creating your own opportunities Mm -hmm. and and really going for it it takes a lot of like yes believing in yourself Mm -hmm. it takes a lot of believing in yourself but but I think too that it takes that really harvesting a community of people that are gonna like rally behind you and and want to see you succeed Mm -hmm. is gonna be all the difference in you making it or not making it Mm. And, and we're also trying to, um, we're not trying, I mean, we are concerned about representation behind the camera as well. So this isn't just about, you know, representation in front, but representation behind and in the people who are on our crew and, you know, everybody. So mm-hmm. it's it's been a really important part of the process. Mm. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Where, where did, in your own journey of life, where did you find that courage where you were talking about to, like, live your truth, speak your truth? Walk mm. your truth. Be yourself. Well, um, I mean, I'll, I'll just start just because um, I I made a video not long ago, a short video called uh, "What Is It?" Seven things to consider when making your first feature film while transitioning from female to male. Um, so yes, <laughs> just because people kept asking me, and I was like, I just gotta make a video about this because I really did like go through this process mm. of telling my family mm. over like cannolis, I swear, like <laughs> um, while I was making my first feature film. Mm. And yes, that was a challenge. <laughs> and it was also, you know, welcome distraction too. Yes. I was like, wow, I can be distracted by making this film. I don't have to talk to my family right now. <laughs> Anyway, that, that, so that, but I had known for uh, many, many years, I mean, since I was a child, but um, it was later in life that I made the, the decision to go through and transition and um, live my truth. Was, was there any certain thing that was the final spark that like ignited that f- fire of courage to be like, I'm going to go for this? Or was there anything like that? I had a bad breakup. <laughs> mm, I'll do it. Oh, hey. <laughs> motivating what about it though why why a breakup um or why that moment i think because the pain was so raw Mm -hmm. and i realized that i had to be authentic i was also um i was 
in the process when I was when I was making this film, this feature film uh, about a character who was living and finding her authentic self, and I was like, I cannot be directing mm. this film if I'm not living my own truth. Mm. So I knew, yeah. So those combined. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to give a quick plug to your film? Alto, hey. Alto, Alto the movie <laughs> dot com. You can, can find it. Yeah. Yes, you can find it on Amazon. If you're Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free. Um, and it's all major uh, video on demand platforms. Nice. So, yeah. Two girls, one gun, the mob. Ah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's all you need to know, really. A L T O. A L T O. Okay. It's fun. We've got uh, Diana DeGarmo, Natalie Knapp, and Annabella Shiora. So Wonderful. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. What about you, Sean? The moment of courage. Yeah. What 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 was it that when you started to walk your truth, live your truth, whatever that looks like in your life? I I think you know I'm I'm still taking those steps. Mm. I'm very much still taking those steps. I mean, they talk about transition, and you know, people always ask, "When did you transition?" But it's like it is a process. Mm. And I remember before I took any, uh, say physical steps mm -hmm. towards or steps towards physical transition, there was mental transition there was emotional transition that, that was just kind of happening and um man i think yeah there are some days a person like i feel i do feel scared mm -hmm. and there's some days i feel like i've got all the confidence in the world and i think it is for me it is about checking in with self i think that's a really important thing and in this day and age, it's so easy to stay super busy and super involved. Like, I've got this to do or that to do or that to do. But it's like, if I don't stop and slow down and, like, write mm -hmm. just for me to, like, figure out what's happening inside emotionally, then it's hard for me to show up courageously in the world. Mm. And, and you know, and I honestly, I don't always stop and take that time. So it's, it's good reminders. It's, like, good to have conversations like yeah. this to say, okay, you've got to do that, you know. And it's also good, you know, to have a friend like you because yeah. that we do, we check in with each other and we can be real with each other and, you know, in ways that we can't sometimes in the rest of the world. Mm. Yeah. What, what would it have meant for you as a young person to be able to have a role model or to be able to see a character like the one that you ought to create? What's his name one more time? Guy Long Longoni. Guy Longoni. Hey! <laughs> I just say it so I can see the look. <laughs> Y'all have got to head to agentofchangeshow.com just to see, scroll down, <laughs> and there's like a moving picture where you do like this cool thing. You got to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Thank you. <laughs> Add some solid directing on set. <laughs> Yeah. What would have, what would have that have been? What would that have meant for you as a young mm. person growing up yeah. to see Guy Longoni? I think there would have been a lot fewer years when I felt like I was the only person on the planet who felt this way. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah. And that would have meant, you know, saved years of um, self-doubt mm. and uh, holding myself back. Mm. So, yeah, that would have made a big difference. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the same. I mean... I, we try to make a really conscientious choice even though he's modeled after this male archetype you know we didn't want him to fit this kind of stereotypical mold you mm -hmm. know he's not the tallest guy in the room and he's not the you know leanest strongest guy in the room but he's he's still he's got to bring a certain sense of self mm -hmm. confidence that doesn't come from being those things mm -hmm. um, how do you how do you really trust yourself and how do you really be the most courageous person you can be knowing that you aren't the tallest strongest guy mm -hmm. which is like a way that folks measure masculinity mm -hmm. right um, so we wanted to make sure that we brought that into this character that we were developing um, but I think actually in real life my guy Longoni mm -hmm. growing up was Ellen DeGeneres mm -hmm. and um, I remember like it was like mid 90s um, when her, when I, you know, tuned into her uh, sitcom at the time, and I was in high school, and I knew right away as soon as I saw her on on screen, like on TV, I was like, oh my god, she's like me. And I grew up in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I had like no queer community in North Carolina. I had no, actually, I didn't know that anybody else could be queer. Like mm -hmm. I knew how I felt, but I didn't. I thought it was just like 
God's joke on me. You know, <laughs> and I'm like the one and only person in the world feeling this way. And as soon as I saw her, I was like, I could tell. I was like, you feel what I feel. I can mm-hmm. tell. Maybe not exactly, right? But like at that time, I was like, we're connected. And it was important for me to know that someone like her was out there. Um, and I wanted to find her. I was like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, which is why I came to California. Hey! I came to California. <laughs> And that's how you probably won the yellow book or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The generous, the generous I call. LA, I'm going there. I know. I just kept getting uh, the busy signal. So yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, I think that is like, it's important, right? To yeah. see like some version of yourself, some part of you that you can like connect with that isn't like a sad, tragic story, right. you know? And, um, and so that was survival. I mean, she was funny. She kept me laughing and, you know, and then, um, so yeah, I, I think she kept my heart light through those times that I mm. didn't know mm. how to figure out what I was going mm. through or dealing with. Mm. It's powerful. Mm. So I just want our audience that's listening to just think of any young person who might be going through maybe what y'all were going through when you were a young person and that what is $5 to you when you really think of it, being able to give that young person an opportunity to see themselves and to save potentially years of self-doubt and instead to have that courage and to be able to laugh. So in all seriousness, really consider sharing even $5, you know, and share that so we can fuel this story, right? Would you all agree with that? We would, and thank you. And I also want to just say that, you know, for us, it's about bringing people in and creating community. So Mm -hmm. when people are giving, we not only appreciate that, we want them to be part of our community Mm -hmm. and part of um, helping us to learn and helping us to grow as well. Mm. I think one of the things that I enjoy most about being an adult is that I get a say in the community I'm a part of now. Mm. How do do y'all nurture and choose your relationships as adults? Mm. Hmm. That's that's actually an interesting question. Um, I was Mm. reading this article in men's health about like it was about can you swear on the show you can okay <laughs> as long as it's, it's, not, it's not no it was about assholes that's, oh, that's, about. Not, that's you, not even a swear. i know you can probably say that you just can't say the b word or the c word right. but you can say the f word you can say all that kind of stuff <laughs> well that is nothing then assholes. okay there you go <laughs> <laughs> but you know it was talking about ways that um we could learn from them. And I'm like, you know what? They don't need any more platform. <laughs> like, isn't there enough of that in the world? And so I guess when I'm choosing my oh, community... Oh, you mean like... And I thought I was like, mm, learn from your asshole. Yeah, not, oh, not okay. your own person. <laughs> I was like, enough oh, assholes like in the world. In the I was like, world. where are you going with it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, like a jerk. Oh, no. Like an... Yeah. Because you said exactly. men's health. So. You're right. <laughs> oh, that's true. But oh, there my might God. be a few things you can learn from your literal <laughs> yes, life. That's all. I was like, I'm with you. Attention I'm there. there. I totally but then when you said that, there's like, enough of them in the world, I'm yeah. like, less assholes. <laughs> How many people are there? It's always changing, that number. Okay, less jerk type of Less jerk, right. Okay. But the, the thing is, like, I try to choose my community based on people who can teach me things, not necessarily assholes, mm. but people who from whom I can learn. Um, I don't always have to agree with everything they mm-hmm. say. I, um, I appreciate that there's a lot of different experiences in the world and so when i'm choosing community i'm choosing people who are interested in self-growth as well Mm, it's powerful i resonate with that yeah big time big Mm. time and no judgy people people. (laughs) i can't i can't do judgy people (laughs) yeah that's pretty much it. Pretty much <laughs> right here, I guess right. you don't judge. I'm good with everything. We're good. <laughs> and no assholes. Yes. No assholes, no judgy. No judges. assholes, no judgy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were some of the conversations y'all were having about masculinity as you were writing and starting to create the film? If we could be a fly on the wall One for One of the of big those. ones that I feel like we have to talk about is being an ally. As mm-hmm. someone with privilege, right, mm. and um, we have a scene. I, I don't want to give too much away, but like we have a scene that's kind of Mickey. How do you describe the scene? Better with words. <laughs> I know. You, you know no, what I'm talking yeah. about. 
So, like, there's a moment where... So, Guy Longoni, the character that I play, is new mm-hmm. at this agency. And he gets partnered up with a, a far more experienced agent who's a woman. Mm-hmm. And they go into interrogation or... Yeah. Yeah. With a potential um, suspect for the crime. Mm-hmm. And who's a cis male mm-hmm. um, who, you know, continues to give credit to the male agent and kind of... T- tries to get chummy chummy with him mm-hmm. and you know kind of like this this idea of a boys club yeah. type of thing so we kind of watch this moment unfold with these three people and um and and i think we i've been in situations like that before where it's like okay uh as someone who doesn't necessarily have the male privilege and then as somebody who has the male privilege and kind of thinking through like well what do i what do i do how do i handle this moment in both cases right so we kind of talked about like this is an opportunity to re to write this scene the way we'd want it to play out mm. and so i don't know if there's yeah. any detail you want to add i don't want to give too much well, away about the story not even but, specifically yeah. about yeah. that but just i was thinking about um i think you were telling me a story about um when you were riding the scooter with nas mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. did you go in, yeah, yeah yeah and you took that you're you both had helmets or something and people just assumed that you were so yeah so uh my fiance and i naz nin uh we went out to uh dinner we were still dating at this mm-hmm. time we went out to dinner went to this restaurant she was she used to drive a scooter mm-hmm. right so which means if she's driving the scooter i'm sitting on the back <laughs> she had the uh her guest helmet was this pink sparkly helmet <laughs> so that's the one i would wear yes right so we go to this uh restaurant we're gonna go get seated so the the host uh was probably in his 20s uh uh male and he saw us walk up with the helmets and whatnot and he asked me what kind of bike i ride i think we had the helmets with us mm. but he said what kind of bike i ride i said oh actually i don't ride she she rides so he started to you know he said you ride on back i don't know man i don't know Wow. So, um, so I said, what don't you know? Like, what's, what's the point? He was like, you let her drive? I was like, let her drive? <laughs> like, wh- what, why should I have a problem with her driving her scooter? Mm. And he didn't know what to say. Mm. And she was right there. It's not like this conversation was just happening mm. between the two of us. She was literally right there. And, you know, I didn't want to get angry with him, but I really, I was like, this is a young guy who's probably forming his own sense of masculinity, mm-hmm. right? His own sense okay. of self and his, yeah. whatever he's saying has come from probably, you know, his experiences in high school with other guys or whatever. But if I show up as a, I don't want to embarrass him. I want to get him to think about what he's saying for mm-hmm. a second. So, um, so we just had a conversation about it. And I think it was such a short exchange. It was like two or three minutes long. But I think by the end, because he was, you know, he ended up taking us to our table. By the end, he was like, oh, okay. You know, and, and it really just kind of lowered his defensiveness, or I don't know what the right word is, but he just kind of thought about it for a second, like, yeah, why why would any guy have a problem with mm. riding on the back of the scooter, mm. you know? And so, uh, so it's, yeah, that was, it was a, and I think it was a good moment for me, because I felt like I could say something, Yeah, you know? Okay. It's, it's such a good example. I've really found that across cultural lines across languages that one of the ways guys try to form quick relationships is through sexism Mm. that if we like i don't know you don't know me like there's so many cultural differences but like women right and it's like oh (laughs) i got you yeah and it's like and that split second like oh let me form a quick relationship with you by talking smack about women yeah i've noticed that so often that people try to go for that Right. Tom, I want to hear some stories from you. I know you're doing the interview. Right? Like, you've been there. Like, what do you do if you're in a situation like that? I, I, re- I think that, like what you said, with questions, that there's, there's two ways you can tell somebody something, like here's the conclusion, mm-hmm. or you can ask questions, which mm-hmm. really takes them on a self-awareness journey. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, what do you mean by let me? It's like, what do I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Because oftentimes... If you were to affirm, like, oh, you know, like, uh, it's like, oh, yeah, see, this is how we build relationships. Mm -hmm. But we Mm want to be socialized. Mm -hmm. We want to be socializing creatures. So by the fact that you're like, that's not cool, then he's got to conform to that if he wants to, in that moment, stay in a socializing way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Yeah, completely. 
And so I, I know we can't change socialization, but when we can change an environment where the standard mm-hmm. is inclusion, mm-hmm. that you then, like the person who says something that's exclusive, when everybody's like, nah, man, that's not cool. That's not how we do it. They're like, oh, man, I'm never going to do that again. It's challenging. Because I'll be isolated yeah. by saying something sexist. Mm-hmm. So if we can just get the community, whatever that culture is, that the standard is inclusion. Right. It'll self-correct itself. Yeah, but you're trying to exclude the sexist is what you're trying yeah. to do. Which but, is but you're self-correcting. It's like, yeah. hey, that's not cool here. And yeah. you're like, well, I want to be here, yeah. so I better change my behavior. Mm-hmm. Whereas what we all normally have to go through is like, hey, like I as a, a guy, like even when I'm growing up, like I am more feminine. Mm-hmm. And the other guys are like, that's not cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it's like, well, I either have two choices. I hide that part of myself. Or I have to get a whole new group of friends. Mm. Most people don't have that that ability to then get a whole new group of friends. Yeah. 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 Very well said. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Completely. It's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> so, what was it like as you started to film it? Have you? How many episodes are filmed? So right now we we only we haven't actually filmed any of the episodes. Okay. We've just filmed kind of a teaser type of proof of concept hey. you know, video. Yeah. Um, it was directed by Jack Garrison, who's going to be directing the series. Mm-hmm. And um, um, I don't know if you want to say more Look. about the experience of, of that that day. Yeah, so what we decided to do was, you know, many times when you're in uh, doing something creative, like visually creative, people want to see it. And uh, if they want, if you're trying to get folks to buy into it, they want to see what it's going to look like. So we said, well, we don't have the funds to mm. shoot this whole thing out. Why don't we do like a quick like proof of concept video, mm. which is like essentially it can look so many different ways. So we're like, uh, well, the characters are important. Let's kind of do like give folks a sense of the characters, like these the types of characters that we're looking to build. And then what's the relationship between the main two, um, our, our two secret agent characters? How do they interact? So we kind of filmed like these couple of scenes and put them together to give people a sense of what this show could be Mm -hmm. and base it in the whole world of this idea of like a seed has been stolen from the global seed bowl Mm. so um so we have a short proof of concept video that we filmed in a matter of a day you know we edited put music and all that stuff and um and so yeah folks can see parts of that through going to agentofchangeshow.com. Mm. Uh, we've brought parts of that into our crowdfunding video so that folks can get a feel of yeah. what it's going to look like mm. and what, what it's going to feel like tonally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm, even though I live with a film director, no idea about the industry, right? Okay. And some people might have just gone to agentofchangeshow.com as well and seen $36,000. What the heck? Are you buying a house <laughs> yeah. in Wisconsin? so break down for people how quickly that money goes or you know like how it makes sense in the film industry 36,000 you know like to is that how much it takes to shoot a pilot or it the budgets vary so much the budgets vary so much because like they're they're it really just depends on the type of project that you're doing but for your project for us where so for us this is like a portion of the funds that we're looking to raise to get the rest of the funds. Okay. So we knew, we're like, we can't crowdfund all of the funds that we need because that's just too much. Um, at some point, the folks that you talk to to invest in the project or to buy into the project want to know if they are the only ones that have bought into the project. Okay. So we're like, no, we want to be able to say no. Here, we've got, we've raised a certain portion of the funds. And not only that, even better than that, we've rallied this entire community of folks who are saying, we want to see this come to life. Mm. We want to see this. We've already started to build an audience which with people who have not just kind of like clicked like or thumbs up, they've actually invested in that idea. Mm. You know, they're backing you with their dollars and saying, here, go do this. This is important to us. We want to see this. Mm. So when you can do that, as independent content creators, when you can do that, an investor pays attention and says, you know what you guys have done, you've you've built that community you've gotten folks together and it builds that interest so for us we know we have a ways to go and we know this is a a step in that direction but we are working we are taking those steps as fast as we can as carefully as we can to get it because 
like you said, there is an urgency. There's been an urgency for yes. like content like this, for creator, yeah. for for characters like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if anybody that's listening has heard of Super Troopers Two. Just mm-hmm. came out. Oh, Yardless. Yeah. 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 Never so, saw Super Troopers one. Okay, right? full full disclosure. Never saw it. Yeah. That was a crowdfunded movie. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So they they started asking people. They said, "We'll give you a free movie ticket yeah. when it comes out." Mm-hmm. So come on, y'all! <laughs> if Super Troopers <laughs> can get crowdfunded, like we need this show up. You know, like it was hilarious. I saw it, but yeah. it did not challenge masculinity in any, <laughs> in any way, single. Yeah. Way so like <laughs> let's have fun. It's gonna be hilarious yeah. and yeah. fun. So we're not saying that like you know you gotta do something that's gonna be crazy. Like Sharon, imagine if you could tell your friends, like oh this thing Orange is the New Black. Like I remember when I invested in that before that thing even came out. Like I'm that cool. You know, <laughs> be that person where you and you have a vision and you invest in it and you can do that. Agent of Change Show dot com. Yeah, well, one thing we want to share, I, I had no idea about Super Troopers. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, I was yeah. like, I, I looked yeah. it all up. I had to know. How did yeah. this even come about? How did this happen? Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, like, we, we've had, we've been lucky because, like, we've had, like, um, there's a company called Sharp Suiting, mm-hmm. and um, they have given us a couple of it- a few different items. So, t shirts, baseball tees, and snapback hats for as rewards nice. for folks that end up contributing at different levels. So, we have things like that. We have, Oh, this is a one thing that we're really happy about: sustainable um, straws, mm-hmm. uh, metal straws. Um, plastic pollution from straws is actually quite, mm. quite terrible. Yeah, it goes in like and, fish's nose and stuff. Yeah. Mm. So um, uh, stainless steel straws are are a way to help kind of um, combat some of the issue that's going on with the yeah. plastic straw waste out there. So that's an additional perk that folks can get when they contribute. Um, and then what was another one? We have these really awesome bow ties, bow ties. Mm. that are going out, like fun floral print bow ties mm. and stuff. Because we want to make it fun, you know, for folks to say, okay, look, thanks for believing in us. Here's a little thank you for you as well. When you mm. contribute at this level, this is what you get. So mm. just wanted to share that. That's dope. Yeah. I've always seen this on TV. So, and I, I see like Will Ferrell and them do it. Totally, if this can't happen, that's fine. But it's my moment, so I'm going to go for go it. Go for it. Can we interview your character? Now? Now. Awesome. You want to interview Guy Long? Oh, yes! No, I have to be right back. Yes. So be right back. I, or is this like, Tom, you don't ask people that. Oh, you can't I do that. I just, I just wanted to put on the spot. Like, oh, oh, he's there. Oh, he here, here it comes. Here it comes. He's there. You've got to get sophisticated. Hey! Yeah. Longoni doesn't mess around. He doesn't mess around. Longoni you got a jacket? You got a jacket? You got a jacket? You want a jacket? Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it my size? Is it, <laughs> is it gonna bespoke? Be <laughs> if it's not bespoke, no, I'm not there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. He does that. Well, I'm, I'm I'm gonna, he'll give you two buttons. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Let's see what comes out. You got any questions for Longoni? Yeah, uh, yeah. Guy is a guy. God, guy Longoni. Guy Longoni. Any any thoughts about my name? There? <laughs> any ideas where we might have gotten that name? <laughs> uh, like a guy's guy? Are you a guy's guy? Guy, guy Longoni. <laughs> we're we're playing with names in we this. Did, we're, we did we're playing. Want, yes, we did <laughs> want to challenge that. We did want to challenge that. Yeah, Idea yeah. being, you know, just wanted to be a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> My question for a guy would be, guy, when you first wake up in the morning, what's your first thought? Where's my bagel? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, where's my hair thickener? Where's my hair oil? Is my hair thick enough? Is my yeah. hair thick enough? Because my second, That's second thought. Did, yeah, he, he wakes up hungry. Yeah. He wakes up hungry. That, that where's my sense. food? And where's make my hair perfect? Make my hair perfect. <laughs> make my hair thicker. It doesn't even have to be perfect. Who wants hair thicker? thicker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, I saw a picture of my brother today, and I was like, damn, his hair is so much thicker than mine. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Testosterone, oh, man. Oh, Testosterone, oh, man. man. <laughs> well, thanks for humoring me. Yeah, that was you fun. Got it, you Always got wanted it. that. You got it, you got it. He, guy, guy's kind of a ham. He likes Oh, he, like he's that. a ham. Mm-hmm. He's not kind of. There's no kind of. There's no kind of. There's no kind of. There's no kind of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <have a> late. <laughs> Yes. What's what's a random fact about both y'all that people can't tell just by looking at you? 
Oh, uh, I'm not that adventurous. Mm. Uh, yeah, people assume that I might be just like super adventurous or something. Like that. I don't know. Am I making that up? You know? <laughs> I don't know. No, I like, yeah, that? people assume that I'm like you know, if, the uh, adventurous. Where I can say I'm not that. I'm not that adventurous. What's adventurous? Let's first define adventurous before we say I'm not that much. I don't know. It's not like I go do parkour. Like parkour? That. Yeah, What's a you know, parkour? You know a parkour? Like where you're running over buildings and climbing you know, up walls. Oh, like, like, yeah, they like, like yeah. run up against the wall and like flip yeah. back. Is that like an stuff? actor like, thing? I do stuff like that. I don't know anybody who not does right stuff now, like that. <laughs> I don't know. I thought this was some like cis Ooh. cis dudes. Yeah, they, do. they just they do parkour. Yeah. Oh, house. is this Sean or is this guy? Both. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely both. Okay. Yeah, I guess but guy will, but guy, guy will try it. Guy will. Guy will be out there. Totally he would try it and dress <laughs> you. Yeah, try it and dress and you. And nail it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he would. No, he wouldn't nail it. He definitely He would nail something, but it wouldn't be that. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 His, his partner will nail it. It's, yeah. She'll nail it. Oh yeah. She can exactly. take the credit. Yeah. Yeah. He, he'll totally take the credit. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. You're not that adventurous. Okay. And what yeah. about Mickey? Mickey. Uh, from looking at me, I don't think you would know that I could do 20 plus pull ups. Hey. I think that's a, that is think? tough. You don't, think, you don't think, right? You wouldn't think that. I, no. I wouldn't think so, but actually, he's really good at, at pull. I mean, you've got push ups, pull-ups. pull ups, pull ups, pull ups. Yeah, you got a pull up bar out there. It's yeah. maybe afterwards. Uh, yes. <laughs> put me up there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have that as one of the celebrations that you'll record doing oh, twenty pull ups? That's actually one not of the a challenges. Bad. Yeah. yeah. It's actually not a bad one. But see, if he knows how to do it, it's not a challenge. So what's yeah. the give number? Him something else. Yeah. What's the number? It's not. A, is it about a number? Or what if we have him? What if we have him doing <laughs> something while he's doing the pull-ups? Let's yeah, think that, about that could for be a yeah. second. This is what we're gonna do. Let's Another screenshot it, it. moment. Screenshot this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the time you're at. Head over if you have not followed. First of all, what are you doing? Go follow. And if you donate, what increment they donate? Fifty, hundred. Every every amount, any amount helps. Like it, it doesn't, you know. Okay. Yeah. You not know, every. You don't have to contribute at every single level. <laughs> any like amount helps. Like and it really means a lot to us. Yeah. You do yeah. you donate, screenshot, email or post it and give the challenge that you want around push ups. Yeah. How pull, ups. Pull, pull ups. Pull ups. How many pull ups? Or push ups. It it's okay. Push ups. Pull ups yeah. while Whatever. singing a song. <laughs> yeah. Pull ups while I don't know. <laughs> don't type make me sing. <laughs> yeah. You get a you get a See, that's challenge. It. He said don't sing. I think that's it. <laughs> oh, oh pull ups while something. singing so bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pull pull ups while well singing. then it, they might be distracted by my poor vocal qualities. <laughs> you get to pick a song. Okay, it's a song. Yeah. It's gonna do twenty pull ups. <laughs> While singing a song, if you donate right now, you get to pick the song. Yeah. Right. I would do Whitney song. Houston. Oh, yeah. That'd <laughs> be so dope. Oh, it's gonna Come be on, dope. somebody's yeah. got to make this happen. <laughs> make it happen. Make it happen. All right, all right. The heat's on, Mickey. Uh, you asked hey, for Hey, you have like, to be an elephant, so I, I'm good. I'll and do sing. it. Yeah, it's like a love song. <laughs> so... Y'all might have heard me say at the beginning that this is my year of courage. That's right. And so the reason I'm doing that is because I found that when people think of courage, they think of people running into a building you know, that's on fire, lifting up a car, which, of course, that's courage. Yeah. But I think for most of us, it's an everyday thing. Mm-hmm. And so I want to have a conversation, which is everyday people, of what is courage. Mm-hmm. So let's start there. What is courage to each of you? Uh, we take a deep breath on that one. That's, I mean, that's an intense question. Courage is being able to tell my fiance. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That I can't do the dishes today. Oh. Ooh. Keep it light. And and because there and I'm saying this because there are times when uh, I have to be honest. I mean, I should be honest every day. But like, there are times when, when I'm scared. Wait a minute. I'm scared. Wait a minute. I can't be honest. Every day. No, but like sometimes there's like a lot going on. I'm like, I don't have the time, and I and I need to ask for help. Mm. And I think like having courage. It's not about shirking the responsibility or anything. It's about like asking for help and saying, Hey, look, I I do need help with this right now because mm. I feel like there's a lot. Not the dishes necessarily, because that's fine. But like whatever it is, you know, just asking for a little bit of help and support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think we ultimately arrived at courage is asking for help when you need it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Sorry, guys. I'm not doing the dishes. 
Especially since it's such like a masculine thing to be like, sorry, honey, I can't do yeah, these dishes yeah. today. <laughs> but it's about the support. As you know, it's about. Yeah. But we, got we you, landed we got at a nice yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Nice thing, so. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 I, I think uh, for me, courage is about um, being able to have conversations with people that you disagree with mm. and have them feel productive. Mm. And yeah, productive. Mm. Productive anger or productive um, sadness or productive whatever it is, um, is courageous in this mm. world that we're mm. living in now. I resonate with that. Yeah. What does everyday courage look like in your life? Mm. Sean doesn't do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to, to strangers. <laughs> You're not gonna live that one now. <laughs> no, no, it's totally coming back to play you, man. I think one of your challenges is gonna be dishes. Yes. <laughs> dishes. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. No, I find myself having random conversations with people. <laughs> yeah. Everyday courage mm-hmm. beyond the dishes. Mm-hmm. That's a good question, man. Mm-hmm. That's like, I feel like that is something that literally has to show up in our lives every day. I mean, I don't know. I, I think it is about the choices that we make. Mm-hmm. Um, cause at different points, we might be confronted with something that feels challenging and scary. And, you know, sometimes we choose to confront it and sometimes we don't. But I think sometimes also knowing that it's we don't have to confront every little thing mm-hmm. all the time. Like, that's a lot. Mm. You know, um, if, if I could just clarify, you're saying we, but for you, what is everything? Oh, I guess I'm talking you? about me. <laughs> <laughs> I do the royal we too. I totally do the. Especially we when he's talking about dishes right now. Oh. The royal we doing the dishes today. <laughs> we are not doing the dishes right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. We are royal. <laughs> we are not doing the dishes. So, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> go, go for it. What's everyday courage? Yeah. Um, I was actually going to ask you because you said it's your year of courage. Mm-hmm. How has that manifested in your life? I was curious. Mm. It's a good question. Yeah. I, no, because, I mean, uh, actually, Thomas part of courage is... Yeah. Thomas, actually, yeah, I didn't see you doing dishes when I walked in here. <laughs> for me, so where you're standing now, mm-hmm. right, there's always going to be a gap between that and your vision. Mm-hmm. It's always a gap there. And I think courage is where you you have the courage to believe that that gap will be closed. Mm. That you mm-hmm. will reach that place. Yeah. And whatever that, that journey is that you go on, you have the courage to put the other step in front of the other. Because it's always going to be on the edge of expansion. You can't get there to this next part of your dream by sitting in sameness. By doing the exact same thing. And you can't get there either through self-doubt or through hating yourself, all these different things. Mm-hmm. And so because I believe we're socialized in a way to need to fill a hole, mm-hmm. whereas instead courage is that you are enough. Mm-hmm. There is no hole because I am enough. And that's when it doesn't matter how long it takes to fill that gap. If you love the journey and yourself, it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? That's Reach, courage that's to do yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And also just... Doing that outside of your comfort zone, mm. like taking those risks, that that is courage. Yes, it is. Yeah. Do you have any courage role models? Um, <laughs> I do. I I mean, this is it, it's strange, but I mean, I I'm gonna go baseball on you. Okay, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> um, I just uh, really like Didi Gregorius okay. from the Yankees. Shortstop for the Yankees. I just feel like every play every time he's in there and he is courageous Mm. and not reckless Mm. i have no idea about sports you got to break that one down for me a little bit (laughs) what's what's the courage because like the ball comes at you fast because like you're like like, "Ah." there's like a million people watching well there are but you know what he had to step into a role that was filled by Derek jeter okay who is a very famous even i know that name right exactly And he had to take that role mm. on, and he was persistent, and he grew, um, and I think he's become an amazing baseball player. Mm. And so I really uh, respect that ability to step into this pocket 
that of somebody who was iconic mm. and say, you know what, I'm going to make it mine. Mm. So. That's, that's boss. Yeah. I like that. My strategy when people talk about sports is just agree with them. <laughs> They're like, damn, yeah, they're like, man, no, that sucks. I can't believe they lost. <laughs> but I had to ask for this one because I was curious. Yeah, that's good. What about for you? Who's, you? who's a courage role model you have? Man, I, I feel like I have a lot of uh, wonderful courage role models, and I think a lot of them are in my own family. Mm -hmm. I have just a really wonderful, supportive family. So I, I might want to, you know... Um, I, I want to talk about them collectively, I think, because, um, you know, we, everyone came from India and I was born here in this country mm -hmm. and uh, my family came from India and, and, and just kind of like did what they had to do to survive mm -hmm. and to uh, make it through. And, and I think I never heard stories as a kid. I never heard, I had a really like happy kind of innocent childhood. I was so oblivious to like what they might have gone through even to just get from India here mm. and they didn't really share with us those stories as kids because they were just like it's it's about surviving and thriving and building and now we have you know now we have kids and now we have to provide and so I, I think like I realized that as an adult everything that they must have gone through without complaining without like you know they just did what they had to do and and have been so supportive like I have a big family and a lot of cousins and whatnot and like I think I've seen like my uncles and aunts um and um I've seen how everyone's kind of supported their like children through their mm. dreams and uh and so like every time I think about uh yeah if I get nervous or scared I think about that and that really keeps me going mm. yeah it's powerful yeah mm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, 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 a, there's actually a big piece of family that always shows up in, in yeah. I think it shows up in my work, certainly, mm -hmm. and I think it's showed up in this as well. Yeah. So, yeah. It's awesome. I really feel like if we had a, like a giggle barometer, this would have been the most <laughs> amount of <laughs> laughter. On a, we laugh a lot in this show. Yeah. Last <laughs> courage question, and then we'll, we'll head out so folks can go home and go to Agents of Change show. Dot com. <laughs> and if they haven't already, it's so no ass though. No, yeah, no yeah, ass. Like, Don't yeah. make the mistake I've been making. So I do that. Once I get something locked in my brain, like I love Downtown Abbey. Uh, Have you ever yeah. seen that? Best yeah. show ever. I call it Downtown Abbey. <laughs> Always. And it's my favorite show. <laughs> because I, yeah. I lock something in my brain, I say it wrong the rest of my life. Don't make my mistake. It's just <laughs> agent of change because guide along is the agent. <laughs> Yo, guide that's a great guide. name. That's a great name. Tom, where were you when we were writing this? It's not guide along. It's yeah. guide along goni. Oh. Guide along. It's like whoa. Now you're French. <laughs> See, I'm so horrible with the guy long goni. This is great, man. <laughs> Make you write that down. Oh, right. I got it all. It's yours. Like his, his evil twin is going to show up. Yeah. That's funny, man. Um, yeah. What is the reward that waits for you or awaits for you mm -hmm. when you decide to walk the journey of courage? I think that um, people surround you in, in mm -hmm. ways that you don't expect it. Um, I would include my family with that as well, but yeah, people show up for you mm -hmm. in ways that you would never have imagined that they mm -hmm. they could. That's awesome. Yeah. So they grow too. People grow mm -hmm. from your journey. Yes. Yeah. Appreciate that. Sean? Mm. The reward, huh? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know that I've ever thought about things in that way, um, but since you asked, Maybe just like a, an inner peace, mm -hmm. an inner peace, because like you know, um, there's like an inner peace, inner trust that that I feel like would develop from that mm -hmm. constant walking that path towards courage. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm like, I don't know what kind of. I mean, everything starts falling into place at that point, mm -hmm. but isn't it like that relationship with yourself that is like the most important relationship? You you don't you don't go away yeah. from you. You can't be like out of here you or, you know what I mean yeah. like you're with yourself all the time and um, yeah so I, I think that would that's probably one of the best rewards that's wonderful so I want to thank you both for coming on the celebration I want to let people know on the show that this is the 
quickest turnaround I've ever done a show. <laughs> where yesterday, we're like, let's do this. We recorded it way late tonight. So this show is going to reach your ears <laughs> in less than, I think, even 12. No, like about 12 hours wow. since it was recorded. Wow. So uh, that's pretty awesome. So it's still timely. Yes, that's how <laughs> urgent this message was. Usually... You know, in transparency, y'all are hearing some recordings like four or five weeks later. So the fact that you're getting it in less than 12 hours, and some of y'all are going to get it in less than four hours, that should let you know how important this is to both me and how I feel like it's going to really add value to your life. So I want to thank y'all so much thank for making you. this happen. Uh, this is where we go ahead and we can do some shameless plugging. So where can folks connect with y'all individually? And if they were missing it, if they fell asleep and just woke up, where can they go to support Agent of Change? Individual, go for it. Yeah. Uh, individual, I'm at WW, you know, all the W's. Okay. Uh, Mickey Dell, M I K K I D E L dot com. And I'm at Mickey Dell. Dope. All the other things. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, mine is all the W's. And then Sean Dasani dot com is S H A A N. Dasani, like the water, dot com, no relation. And it's at Sean Dasani across uh, social platforms. Dope. And what about Agent of Change? Where can they find that? Yes. And so right now, if you go to agentofchangeshow.com, you'll go straight to our crowdfunding page. And after our campaign is over, after the next 27 days, it will go to, we will build our website and you'll still be able to stay uh, up to date with what's happening with Agent of Change as we develop the show. Perfect. Yeah. So for those of you who are on the go, listening while you're at work, you're on a run, you're cleaning the house, and you haven't had time to write things down or anything like that, and you're like, I can't remember all this, then show notes, of course, are going to be tomrell.com slash agent of change. So if you go to tomrell.com slash agent of change three times, tomrell.com slash agent of change, you can find all of the Instagram, social that you can connect with both my guests, and the link for where you can donate. And if you're listening to this, maybe even a year later, um, they'll be sure to update me with the website. You'll see the updated link so you can stay um, on it. If you're listening to this about four years later, you will see we were historically correct in predicting this is going to be one of the biggest shows ever and that we got in on the ground floor. And God, does it feel good to be right when you're predicting what's going to be the next big viral binge-watching worthy video so get on in it now so you can brag to all your friends that you know what i heard it on day four okay <laughs> i was the one who got them to do a pull up while singing this song and you know i was when i got shot to do the elephant thing that was me so you know get some bragging rights all it's going to cost you is a minimum of a dollar so Thanks. it's always worth that Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, thanks, thanks to yeah, all our thanks, listeners. Too. Yeah, thanks course. to all the listeners. Of course. I really appreciate yeah. it. Definitely appreciate the support and the yeah. love. Definitely. Yeah. Any other things you want to add about the show before we sign off? Silence. Silence? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. I always like to let y'all have the last word. What is your invitation for our audience? Invitation for them to think about, invitation for them to do, invitation mm. you know, for them to be, all that mm. stuff. And we've already invited them to donate, so it can be mm-hmm. outside of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Take risks. Yeah, that's a great one. Take risks, and uh, keep surrounding yourself with positive folks. And this show is a great, great place to mm-hmm. like just be surrounded by positivity. I have a feeling like your audience, you know, folks probably tune in time and again because they, they love the sound of your voice. They love the energy that you mm-hmm. bring in. Um, so, so keep surrounding yourself with wonderful, positive energy so that you can take the risks that you want to take. Yeah, go yeah. out and, and live your dreams. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I want to thank you both once again. It really means the world to me to have you all here and all the laughs and insights and really sharing your truth with us. Appreciate that. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We want to thank you once again. The greatest gift that you can share is your time and attention. And you've done both. You've stuck with us through this whole thing. It really means a lot to us. We want to thank you that. And as always... We're wishing you peace and blessings. Oh, oh one, one more thing. I'd love to continue the conversation. Feel free to join me at tomroll.com slash join. Subscribe below or let's connect on social media. Tom Earl Artist. Thanks again for watching. Yay.